Can you guys see that? Man, that clear acrylic frame is really hard to see on camera. Let's throw a crappy box behind it, and hey, now we can uh, actually see what's going on. Okay, so this is the G-Tech, G-E-E-Tech i3 Pro B, currently for sale on eBay for $179. But when this kit first came out, like five years ago or whatever, uh, it was like $350. So at $179 with free shipping, that's quite the deal. Now, it is an old design, and if you want to know sort of all the details on the design, you can watch uh, this video right here where I compare it to uh, two other printers. Um, but in this video, we're just going to cover the, um, the upgrades that I've done to really make it into a top-notch printer. Uh, let's start with the threaded rod. So it came with threaded rods, and I've replaced that with lead screws. So when I did that, I uh, drilled this hole out in the frame. And the reason for that is that we do not want to unnecessarily constrain the top of these threaded rods. Um, they almost all get bent in shipping from China. And uh, if you're holding them up here so they can't move up here, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So because it can't move here, it ends up moving down there. And that affects your carriage. And then you get wavy walls, which is not the same as Z-Wobble, but it kind of looks the same. Um, same effect, your, 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 your vertical walls are not perfectly straight. So yeah, that's a big upgrade. But the problem is when you do that upgrade, while the physical upgrade itself is very easy, like incredibly easy, uh, it requires that you go into firmware and change your, uh, your steps per millimeter. Uh, so that's kind of scary to some people having to go in there and mess with firmware. But since we're gonna be messing with firmware anyway, we might as well do the big upgrade and that right here is the, um, the proximity sensor. And with this proximity sensor, we can uh, use the modern Marlin feature of auto mesh bed leveling, which negates your need of uh, manually leveling your bed with these four screws. It, it's very convenient, you guys. Um, so that's probably why most of you are tuning into this video, but there are a number of other upgrades that I've done to this printer, and in case anybody wants to get, that, get this, um, let me just go through them real quick. Uh, love this knob. Of course, you can use this on any of these uh, of these printers. It's got a hemisphere sort of offset, which is better than sort of a dimple or a depression. It just allows you to scroll through the menus very quickly. Um, I put a blower fan to cool the parts. So that's a, a nice part cooling fan. You just saw that right here, there's the proximity sensor. And we're going to look uh, at the proximity sensor in more detail here in a minute. Uh, also over here on this side, we have a PC... Uh, fan mounted to cool the main board and underneath there's a bracket a uh, custom bracket that I made to uh, to catch the belt that's sort of your belt mounting bracket so let's look at some of these uh, these upgrades in more detail starting underneath the bed here I've removed the uh, heated bed from this printer and we're looking through the um, the bed mounting plate here and you can see that orange uh, part that I designed now that captures and retains the belt. It is the Prusa design uh, technique for, for holding your belt and able to adjust it for nice temperature or for nice tension. And you can see uh, both sides of it there. So that's a nice little part that replaces the sort of janky way that they want you to do it per the instructions. Now what they originally wanted you to do is uh, take this, this side of the belt and drill a hole in the end of the belt and then use that same screw that you see there to mount through the hole, it's uh, it's really kind of silly. So that's a much better solution. But word to the wise, you're going to want to use a high temperature plastic for that part. I originally printed it um, out of PLA instead of the ABS that you're looking at, and the PLA part uh, softened, and the and the belt tension sort of pulling on it kind of warped it so that uh, my belt just fell off. Now that happened when I put the printer in an enclosure. You might be okay if you used PLA. Uh, and you were just printing this in the open air. But I don't know, high temperature plastic is probably your safer bet. So let's take a look at the board here real quick. And yeah, this is one of my favorite boards, you guys. Uh, it's just a really high quality. Things like this uh, plug for your power coming in from your power supply. Now that plug usually is what's seen on like an ATX uh, power supply for like a computer. Um, like a tower computer and even though it's got this plug so you pretty much can't 
reverse polarity and, and, and short out your board, they still put the circuit protection. Those are fuses, you guys. So even if you somehow manage to, to feed in polarity wrongly, you could just replace your fuse and you'd be fine. Um, yeah, look at they got heat sinks on the MOSFETs. I haven't seen that on any other board. Uh, of course, the detachable stepper sticks, so you can put the 132nd of a step uh, sticks on there and get really fine resolution from your printer. Or you can put the silent stepper sticks on there and quiet down your stepper motors. Uh, yeah, it's just a really, a really well-designed board. Um, but the reason that I'm primarily uh, showing this shot to you is so that you can see this 5V point right there that I've soldered this gray wire onto. And that is where you get your 5 volt power to feed to your uh, proximity sensor. So you can see what I've done is I've used one of these uh, jumper uh, wires that you can get on, on eBay. They're like for Arduino projects. And that way I can unplug it right here. Um, and so that's my power. And so you have three lines that come in from your, uh, from your sensor. And so that's the power line. And then the other two lines just go into the regular Z limit switch uh, connector. So that's pretty easy and self-explanatory. Let's take a look at this fan cover that I've designed and printed here. Um, it uses a, a PC case fan, which is a whole lot quieter and provides um, a lot better cooling than the stock uh, little 40 mil fan that was blowing on this board. So I have put this printer into a, um, a heated enclosure at 50 degrees and I ran that through a number of prints and I never had a problem with the board overheating. Now without that fan, the, the MOSFETs and those heat sinks get real warm. So uh, you definitely need cooling on it, um, but, but this fan does a very adequate job. And I gotta say, I don't recommend uh, using this printer in a heated enclosure. And the reason is that the, the, the plastic of the frame expands and contracts so much that your bolts and nuts that hold the frame together uh, will loosen up. And eventually the, the nuts just start falling off and your frame gets all floppy. So uh, this is an open air printer, pretty much. And taking a look at this, uh, at this bed, we can see uh, some, the remnants of some past prints. Now this is just a glue stick residue. I use glue stick to, uh, to adhere my prints to the glass. And you can see these sort of channels in the aluminum. And that is just because the aluminum foil expands and contracts and makes these, call them air bubbles. But um, in practice, I haven't noticed those air bubbles throwing off my, um, my bed calibration. So at first I was a little worried about it, but they're, uh, they don't seem to matter. Now maybe if I had a really large air bubble and that happened to be the exact point where my bed, my bed calibration sensor was coming down, that might be an issue. But these air bubbles seem to form in the same spot uh, again and again. So a um, little sloppy. I would prefer to have maybe some industrial uh, strength aluminum foil, some thicker stuff than, than just the kitchen grade uh, stuff that I'm using, but the kitchen grade stuff works. So that's the important part. And I've probably used this for, I don't know, 50 prints and I've had no issues. Looking now at the, um, the sensor as I've mounted it uh, to the um, X carriage here. And this sensor is, it originally looked like this green one here. And you can see that there's a lot of height to that green one and it, it wouldn't fit underneath this uh, stepper motor. So I had to kind of chop it and then uh, this mount sort of wraps around there and this screw, uh, as I tighten that screw, it sort of just pinches the sensor so that I can adjust the, uh, the height on the sensor. And that is uh, pretty necessary uh, to getting uh, these to work well. Um, so let's just go up here to the top and I'll do prepare uh, auto home. And you guys can see that this sensor, let me hold this wire out of the way, but you'll see that this sensor comes on. The light activates and it, it realizes when it's, it's reached its Z limit. There you go, the light comes on. And it'll go up and then it'll go down slower just to make sure that it's done its job right. Boom, so now it knows where that Z height is. So um, over here I have this Ramps 1.4 shield and all this wiring up at the top is uh, just a bunch of sensors. So let's go through those sensors real quick. We have the uh, this blue one, this is a 10 to 30 volt sensor and all these you can purchase on eBay. So here's the 10 to 30 volt sensor and you can see that the light comes on as well. It detects the bed. It's pretty close to the bed, but it detects it. This green one here is a six to 36 volt declared value and it detects the bed. All of these are running five volts, by the way. They are not running their 
their declared value, 6 to 36 volt or 10 to 30 volt, whatever. So here's another 6 to 36 volt sensor. And this one actually has a pretty good detection distance. Uh, this is a good one. Now all these are somewhere between like uh, six, three to six dollars on eBay. So uh, this one here is nice because it's nice and thin. So if I'd have known about this one when I was designing this mount, I would not have had to cut that sensor. But this is a, a one that I found more recently. And unfortunately the light is facing downwards. So let's take this bed off the, um, off the printer. So the aluminum foil is on the back here. So this is the side, this back side here is the glass. And we're just gonna come up to the glass until that sensor comes on. So we can see, oh, I was touching it, but there we go. Not touching it and the light comes on. So these all work, uh, despite their declared values, they all work running off of uh, five volts. However, this type. Now this type was what was originally available on eBay. So everybody started using these uh, for their printers. And uh, there's a little bit of controversy about whether or not this will work running on five volts. And you can see this is a um, normally closed, that's why the light is on, but when I put a piece of metal behind it, 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 it turns off. So it's the opposite of all the others which are normally open switches. This is a normally closed switch, but it will not detect the aluminum foil through the glass. I don't know if you guys can see that light, but it's, it's not working, you gotta trust me. Uh, whereas if I kind of put this under there, the light goes off. So. Um, yeah, these don't work. I wouldn't recommend using these unless you're gonna actually up the voltage, which is a little bit more complicated. So uh, go with the other form factor. And by the way, gearbest.com sells a version uh, similar to this one, but it's blue. And of all my testing so far, that's the best one. So I would recommend getting that. That's a $15 sensor. These, most of these go for like $3 on eBay. Um, yeah, okay, so Let's now look into the software and get the uh, auto mesh bed leveling uh, running on this printer. And just like all my other videos, when you wanna download firmware, uh, because you wanna do an install on your computer, you go to marlinfw.org. Um, the other option that I haven't really gone over is this uh, Repetier firmware configuration tool. And you wanna to switch to the newest version right there, switch to 0.92, and uh, you'll just start going through the, uh, the steps, next step. And it's gonna ask you all these questions, very specific questions about your printer. And you can just keep going through there. Now, um, I think that for a while there, uh, Repetier firmware was um, actually working better for like uh, Delta printers, but um, I don't really know that many people that wanna use the Repetier firmware. Most of the, everyone I know uses uh, the Marlin firmware. So I recommend Marlin. So obviously we're gonna download that here and we're gonna download the 1.1.x zip. And that is actually, it's telling us the version right there. It's 1.1.5. So I'm gonna copy that and we'll see why. I'm gonna download this. So I have my downloaded uh, file right here and we will just extract that right here. So now it's been unzipped. And what I like to do is to rename it the correct version. Now that's 1.1.5. So uh, yeah, now it's renamed and uh, we don't have to be confused. Uh, we'll know like if, we, if the 1.1.6 comes out, uh, you'll know which one it is. So here we go. Uh, Marlin and scroll on down to marlin.ino. But before we do that, you wanna be up here in the example configuration. So this printer that we're working with is a GTEC, and it does happen to be the i3 Pro. So I will just copy that configuration.h, and I'm gonna paste it. See, there's configuration.h right there. So I'm just gonna paste it here, and I want to replace the file in the destination. And now, uh, when I come down here to open up marlin.ino, and I open up the Arduino IDE, it's going to already be uh, largely ready to, to go. Uh, I'm still gonna have to change a number of values, but um, there's some, a lot of the settings are already uh, done for you. So that's, that's a great thing about that examples folder. Now, I haven't found a single one of those examples that works straight out of the folder. You still have to modify them, but uh, it does help, so. Okay, as usual, we wanna open up our serial monitor. So we are connected. Um, and if we weren't, we would go up here to tools and we would select the correct board, which is Arduino Genduino. Then we would select the correct chip, which is 2560, because this is 
the GT2560. Now, if it was one of those crappier chips, the AT1284s, now you can read the, the, the printing right on the chip, right in there in the center of your board, uh, but that's where you would select that. Um, so yeah, okay, so, but I've got that all set up and, and my um, comm is working. Hey, one other quick note, sometimes no line editing gets selected somehow. Don't ask me how, it just weirdly happens to me, but you wanna make sure that both NL and CR are selected. You wanna be able to do everything. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do in our, uh, in Marlin, of course we're gonna be uh, messing only with configuration.h. That's the only tab here that we need to mess with uh, for this build. Um, it's a pretty simple build. Now for your printer, when you connect the uh, serial monitor, you might not get all this information. It might just look something like uh, everything above that. So all this now highlighted in blue. Um, so if you don't see all of this and you do want to actually take a view at it and, and you, I mean, you do want to take a view at this. So what you want to type is uh, M501, enter. Oh, I'm sorry, you need to have a cap locks. M501, 501, enter. And you're going to see all that information again. So what's happening with my printer is it's automatically starting that. Now, I had one board, it was, one of, it was the Melzi uh, 2.0 board, and the M501 command did not work on it. But in that case, an M503 command gave me the same information. Okay, so let me just shut that down. Tools, serial monitor, just so we can see it again uh, from scratch, uh, so we don't get confused. Um, okay, so what we need, and we, the reason we need to run that M501 command is because it's giving us uh, the printer's stock values, like what the manufacturer is gonna determine is the best values for your printer. And they're usually right, they're making the printer after all, so they, they pretty much know its limits. So over here in firmware, we can, can, we can scroll down to, uh, where is it, way down here. Like let's just say uh, default max acceleration. Right, well we can probably find acceleration right there. 1,000, no, 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 maximum acceleration in units, right there. So that is where we get our values to plug in right there. Okay, so you get the idea. I'm not gonna go through each of the values uh, here. I'm just gonna try to uh, swing through this really quick. But that's, that's why you need this information, okay. So over here, starting at the top, uh, getting started, we don't need to mess with any of this. It, it was already kind of um, set up for us because we selected that example uh, sketch. So uh, we can just scroll on down here. There's a couple of things that I do like to check though. The first is that the baud rate is 250,000. That's as fast as these, uh, as these Arduinos will communicate and that's what you want. The motherboard is declared as a board uh, dot ultimaker. Now, if you're using a different printer and you don't have an example sketch to go along with yours, what you're gonna need to do is go find your board. So you go over here to boards.h. Uh, which will be, we saw it, boards.h, and then you just find your, your printer. So if I do a control F for search and I, and I look up GTEC, actually you want GT2560, because that's the board, right? 2560. And look, there is actually a board declared for, for this printer. And it says the GT2560 Rev A plus with auto leveling probe. Well, we don't have that. We, we had to solder in ours. So uh, we would actually use the GT2560 Rev A. Um, if I was building this from scratch, I would have used that board. So you can either use number 74 or you can copy all this text. Either one will work uh, back here in configuration.h. So right there, I could either type 74 motherboard underscore no, motherboard 74, or I could type in like that. Um, but because I'm using this example sketch, I'm just gonna leave it the way that they had it. Um, the pins are all gonna be the same for this Ultimaker as they are in the GT2560, so that's why it works. Okay, uh, scrolling on down, I like to change uh, one little great thing, and that is, I think I mixed it up here, board, motherboard, baud rate, custom machine name, right there. I mean, you can name your machine Clarence if you want. 
uh, you know, it'll say clearance ready or clearance printing, uh, but we'll just put G E E E Tech I3. Uh, yeah, so that's just fun. Just name your printer right there. And scrolling on down, uh, most of this we don't even need. It's all set up for us. It was ready. Like, this is the kind of thing you would need to set up, you know, how many extruders you have, all that kind of deal. But because we're using that example uh, configuration, it's already set up for us. Okay, so scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down, mechanical settings, end stop settings. Yeah, right here on line 492, we're going to need to change our end stop uh, inverting to true. And we're going to need to change our Z min probe end stop inverting also to true. Um, I arrived at that, I just know this printer, right? Now, I, um, but I didn't know that from the get go. Um, I just sort of trial and errored it. And when it was, uh, trying to do, um, you know, a, an auto mesh bed leveling or even just a homing on the Z axis, it was going the wrong direction. So that's when I know that I need to uh, reverse that. So um, let's scroll on down. Um, what we need to do now is uh, do all these movement settings. Okay, so scrolling down here to uh, the default axis steps per unit, right over here in the, uh, in the serial monitor, we see uh, steps per unit. Now, unfortunately, I uploaded this sketch, so the serial monitor is reporting to me the same values that are in this sketch. But if you had not uploaded it, and you, you, should, you should not have uploaded uh, yet, um, I was trying to show something that didn't work, so I cut that part out of the, the video here. But if you had not uploaded, uh, you would see the correct steps here. So you would just copy your X, whatever it is, 100, maybe it's 100, 100, and this is gonna be 417. So that's just something that I know Right here, this is your Z steps per millimeter. And this needs to be 417 because we changed the threaded rods to be lead screws. So that's one change that I'm sure you need to make. But the rest of them, the rest of these values, you'll just pull right in from over here. Just put them right there, plug them in. Okay, so scrolling down, Z probe options. So this is where we get into our auto mesh bed leveling. First, we need to tell the printer that it has a probe. So define fixed mounted probe, boom, right there. So you disable the little comments, that's the two slashes, and now that is gonna be ready to go. And after you've done that, you scroll down to, you know what, let's, um, let's not do that. Let me show you something. Let's, let's leave it like that, and then we're gonna scroll down to uh, our bed leveling, and we're gonna unclick this here for Define auto bed leveling by linear. So now let's uh, let's upload this. Now I th you know we aren't done yet, but if we were done, uh, ideally it would upload and work. But what we've, what we've got is this error here. It says probe manually for f needs. So if you're going to define by linear bed leveling, you need to define your probe. So look at it. That's where I got to give so much credit to the to the guys who who made Marlin. They really kind of made this a bit idiot proof, as idiot proof as you can make a, a bit of coding. So, okay, we go back to our configuration.h, right? And now we scroll back up there to where uh, I was seeing that uh, fixed mounted probe, fixed mounted probe, delete, delete, and we upload that and we won't have an error. So while it's uploading, I'll just keep talking, but you see there was no error, it was ready to go. Um, so back up to that, to that um, the end stops being true and then true. Well, I changed this just this value and I got one of those errors and I, it told me that I need, needed to change that value also. So that's, that's how I figured that out. So really uh, great programmers who made this. What we have here that's important now is this. Um, now, this is where the, the graph tells you, you need to put your calipers on, uh, on the actual probe from the nozzle tip, you need to measure. This would be 10 in the positive Y, 10 in the, in the positive X. Uh, and we, that's, you know, I think I'm actually more like 20 and eight, something like this. And this is gonna be 2.2, negative. Oh no, 2.2, because we are, the probe sits 2.2 millimeters higher than the, than the, than the, than the actual print nozzle. If it sat below it, then the probe would hit the bed before the print nozzle did, and that would be bad. So uh, that's that's how you do that. And you'll need to you'll need to tell it where the probe is, otherwise you'll have big problems. 
So what else do we need to do here? There's this define Z safe homing, and we definitely want to use that. And when you're safe homing, it's going to go to the bed size divided by two. Um, and that's literally going to probe in the very middle of the board. So that's, that's a key thing that we want to do. And that's down there on line, oh, I don't know, 968, see it? So what else do we need to do here? Okay, another thing we're going to need to get to is the bed size. Now I happen to know that the glass uh, is one, uh, 200 millimeters wide in the X direction, if you'll recall what it looked like. And it's actually 220 millimeters wide in the Y direction. So, but because I'm, I'm getting a collision, I don't really want to show it too much on camera, but uh, I'm declaring this at 215, so I lose five millimeters. It's not that big of a deal. And actually this ends up, or I'm sorry, this is 195 and this is 215. Uh, and that just works out for, for me with this printer. Now, the X minimum position is actually off the board to the negative, and it's negative 15. Uh, the Y minimum position, I call it zero, and that's fine, but I happen to know that this also goes to 180 on my printer. Now, these are just values that I figured out the hard way. I uploaded the sketch, I manually uh, took the printer up as high as it would go, and then, you know, I declared that value here in firmware. So you just kind of back and forth, back and forth. Okay, so down here, on line, what is it, 877, basically, you've got your left probe bed position, your right probe bed, all this. Um, so what you need to do is make sure that that uh, is more than those limits that we just set about the, the bed size. So, you know, like, like if, this was your, if this was, you know, 250, of course that's gonna be a whole lot farther off the board than, uh, than where we were a minute ago with the, you know, if the board's only 200 and, or 195 millimeters wide and we're trying to probe off at 250, we're, we're way off the board and the printer can't possibly go there. So the actual bed position is probably gonna be somewhere like 178, right? Uh, so you have to figure out those values as well. Um, just use common sense. And the final uh, two things that I like to kind of mess with that really aren't that critical are down here on line 1276, reverse encoder direction. If you upload your sketch and you find that the, uh, the encoder wheel spins the direction that you don't want, then you just do that. Uh, you uncomment that line. And then the other thing is right down here on line 1309, uh, we have this noise making. So literally every time you press the little knob, it's gonna make a little chirp, a little beep. Um, you can set those to zero if you want them to go away. I set that to five and I set this to 50. And it's just kind of a really low, quick beep and it's, it's not as annoying. Um, but yeah, maybe you just want to turn that off. Uh, it's kind of annoying. So, and you get the tactile feedback from pressing the knob and having it click. Uh, so you really don't need that. So yeah, so that's, uh, that's about that. And then you click on the upload and your printer should work. And if it doesn't, you just keep adjusting it. So now let's get into uh, setting your probe height uh, relative to your nozzle. So I've uploaded the firmware to my printer here and I'm going to open the serial monitor and that will restart the printer and we'll see version 1.1.5. Um, which is cool. We know we're, uh, we're nice and updated. So now I will G28, which will be an auto home. So the auto home happened at the center of the bed and that was because we set it up like that in firmware. Uh, and that's pretty cool. So the next thing we wanna do is um, M851Z negative one point, let's just call it Z negative one, enter. And we want to do that because we want to set up uh, the printer, M500 uh, is going to save that value. Okay, so we want to set up the printer. It's a weird thing, the first time that you ever run this command, it's going to behave differently than all the other times. So if you M851 and just set it as, as positive one, then you're, you'll, be, you'll be safer, it'll be better off. So um, now what we want to do is uh, go uh, M211, S0, and what that does is it's, it sets our, our software end stops to off. You can see it right here. Um, and so that allows us to plunge into negative space. So now, right there, G0, Z0, 
enter. And we can see that it is still a, a long way off the, uh, off the print bed. So there I am doing that. Um, but because our software end stops are off, I can come over here, prepare, move axis, move Z by 0.1, and I can start lowering until I'm touching. And I'm touching at negative 1.5. So negative 1.5 it is. Um, so now what I want to do is M851, that command we just did a second ago, but we want to set that to uh, Z negative 1.5, enter. And then we want to M500, that saves the value in EEPROM, saves it in, in memory for the printer. And we can pull that out and we can, let's just turn the serial monitor off and on again, just so we know that when the printer resets, it will be working. And G28. Okay, so now let's just do a G zero Z zero. That will move the print head to zero. And that's a little bit risky because we could have a collision with the bed there, but we didn't, we're perfect. The paper is a little bit tight, um, but it's, it's doable, it's workable, especially because we're printing on glass, so I'm not too worried about it. So now I can run a G29 command. So that was our zero. You can see we're at Z zero and we are touching the bed. So G29 and it's gonna run an auto mesh bed leveling routine. And there we are, we can send a print and it will print no matter how unlevel the bed is. In fact, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna tweak this bed. I'm gonna loosen this one and tighten this one uh, quite a bit. It's a full turn on each of those. So they are gonna be, that bed's gonna be a little cattywampus and we're gonna send a pretend print. We're gonna send a print without actually having any filament in it. The final thing we need to do on the computer here is with the correct printer uh, selected here in Kira, or whatever software you're, you're using, you'll need to do this. Uh, go to your printer settings. Uh, so in this case, we're at printer manage printers in Kira, and then uh, machine settings. Right here in the start code, that's what you're trying to find uh, for any slicer that you're using. Uh, below the G28, which is the, uh, you know, the auto home, we wanna put a G29 command. Now, I've actually already added it, but we would just put it immediately after it homes, you wanna run the auto mesh bed leveling. You can put a semicolon, which is a comment in this case, semicolon auto mesh bed leveling, just to tell yourself uh, what that is. Okay, so close that out, and now you're ready to print. I actually, off camera, I threw these off quite a bit more, so that bed is seriously slanted down towards this corner. Um, it's way out of level, and if I, uh, print from SD card and print this bed test that I made. Uh, the bed test only requires a temperature of room temperature basically. So uh, we're not really printing, we're just gonna see it go through the motions as if it was printing. So it's gonna do the auto bed leveling routine here right after it auto homes. And now it's gonna start printing and we're gonna watch these Watch these Z-axis uh, screws change quite a bit. So I put this flag on there so you can see uh, how much the printer is correcting for that Z. So watch it just move, you see that? So normally when the bed is perfectly flat, if you did a uh, manual calibration uh, on the bed, and there wouldn't be any movement whatsoever in the Z uh, as it was printing. But because this is, uh, auto mesh bed leveling, it corrects for that. So you never need to manually calibrate your bed again. And in fact, it can be uh, quite a, lo a long ways off uh, out, of, uh, out of square, out of true. So pretty cool stuff and that's how you get it working. And there it is. That's how you upgrade a, uh, a 3D printer to having um, auto mesh bed leveling, uh, in particular this GTEC i3. Now, um, there are a few more upgrades I could do to this printer. The biggest one would probably be putting a spool holder up here at the top uh, so that I'm not having to feed up and over like this. Um, and this printer is a direct drive, which means that the uh, extruder 
sits right here on the X carriage. And the disadvantage to a direct drive is the fact that it weighs so much. So you have to slow the printer down a lot to reduce uh, ringing uh, on your prints. But there is an advantage to having uh, direct drive and that is the fact that there's just a very short length of filament after the extruder, um, which means you can print with flexible materials and print really well with them. So. Yeah, I mean, we're not going to see a whole lot of direct drive machines anymore. It looks like everything's going uh, towards Bowdoin uh, setups. So it's nice to have a printer like this uh, still in, in, your, in your quiver of printers. Um, if you do not want to do all the upgrades yourself, as I've just shown you how to do them, um, please go and donate to my Patreon page, and I will send you these files. Well, that's just about it for this video. Uh, click all the good buttons down below, and I'll see you next time.